Today I'm covering, covering vertical projectile motion. So not am I, only am I covering vertical projectile motion, I'm covering equations of motion. But you know, the test of the pudding is in the eating. If you guys at the end of today can do four questions that come from past year's paper, then you're good. Am I not right? So I have full confidence. Do you see me standing here with notes thinking, what must I look up? No, I know this stuff. I know the sun rises in the east and I know what a projectile is and I know most of the stuff. So I don't, this is the way you must know physics. It mustn't be something you go and study. Would it be ridiculous if I gave you a note, projectiles fall downwards? Because that's what we're talking about. I mean, what do you, you know they fall downwards. Am I, am I right or am I right? <laughs> but what you don't know is, for example, this. Which falls faster, the cap or the pen? The cap. Falls the faster. Same time. The cap and the pen so fall, the, the, fall the faster. Fall at the same time. Yes. Yes. Do you hear one bang? No, I think the watch the, again. The, the, one bang. Just, the, just watch again. Just so. see if you hear two bangs. So. You see they hit the ground at the same time. Now do you know that for years, for years, thank you, people thought that light things fell slower than heavy things. Do you see, do you see, do you see how they're getting confused? Watch, I can't show it on there, but you see that that falls faster than a light piece of paper. So they got confused thinking that light things fall faster than heavy things. What they don't know is you take a light thing, scrunch it into a ball, and drop it like this. Now they fall at the same rate. It took hundreds, of, if not thousands of years for people to figure that simple science fact out. It's amazing, isn't it? People just assume that feathers fall slowly, cannonballs fall quickly. Okay, so we want you to know that it makes no difference in this section what the weight of the object is. They all fall at the same rate. So, what is a projectile? You see, maybe it would be better if I had my thoughts organized. Let's talk about what is vertical projectile motion. First of all, what is a projectile? A projectile is this. What is that? That's a projectile. It is something in the air falling under the influence of only one force called gravity. gravity. This is not a projectile anymore when it falls under the influence of two forces, one called, what's the other force? One is gravity and the other is, what is this force that opposes motion? Friction. Friction. Okay, so what is a projectile is an object falling, flying, freely. And uh, the influence of one force, namely gravity or weight. Okay, so here's our projectile. And it's falling under a force called weight or gravity. Happy with that everybody? Yes, Anything new that I've told you so far? Yes. Jamie? Anything new? Yes. Is this new? Yes. Okay, fantastic. I need to waste some time with all the stuff. <laughs> now, just to get it out of the way, if you have a skydiver, here's a skydiver. A skydiver is falling under this force called what? Gravity. Gravity or weight. But a skydiver who jumps out of a plane, 
<laughs> Whoever's going to jump out of a perfectly good plane? Only skydivers, right? He falls and falls and falls. Now, what do you know about things that fall? Does he fall faster or slower? Or does he just fall at the same rate all the time? What do you think? So, Neil? Do you think a skydiver goes faster or slower? Or the, the same speed that he jumped out of the plane, he falls at? So, probably like change speeds due to the wind. So, due to the wind, he changes. Does he get faster or slow? Slow. So I think that when he when he leaves the plane, his his altitude is very high, so therefore he's gonna therefore he's gonna be you know, he's gonna be slow. So but as he reaches the Earth's surface, he's gonna fall, he's gonna pick up speed. What do you think of that idea, Tony? That's that's, that's not Mikhail says. As it goes down, as it goes down, it's gaining speed. Does everyone agree that as things fall, they gain speed? If I had to find a brick, which unfortunately I can't see here, and I had to drop it into your hand like that from a short distance, would it hurt your hands much? No. If I dropped it from a roof, what would it do to your hand? So I'd be like the higher, the faster it would fall. The higher, the more speed you'd be on that brick. Why? Because that brick is now picking up speed as it falls. Okay. But what happens is there is as he falls, there's a force that acts against him falling, and eventually those two forces became, become the same. This force, and we already mentioned it, what is the force that opposes motion? <coughs> force of friction eventually becomes the same as the force of weight or gravity. Now, at that stage, Newton 2 and uh, Newton 1 applies. Let's all just act out Newton 1. What is Newton 1? An object will move at a constant velocity if, unless it's acted on by an unbalanced force. Do you see why you, I need you guys to know Newton 1 like it was your best friend? Mm -hmm. Because we use Newton 1 all the time. So now when he's at this point where he's fallen out of a plane, he falls, he gets faster and faster, but eventually friction catches up with him and he now falls at a constant velocity. That is called a certain thing. It is called terminal velocity. There was a movie terminal. called terminal <laughs> velocity is when F, should call it G, equals F friction. So his, his weight is equal to the friction. Now, how many of you are planning to go to university? I, I must share a story with you. Wonderful. And then you're going to meet, you're going to join clubs, and you're going to do, have opportunities you never had. Well, when I joined WITS 40 something years ago, in 1971, <laughs> I joined the parachuting club. And so I was terrified of heights, but I thought, let's join the parachuting club. It was quite cheap. So I hopped into a little pipe at Cherokee. We flew up there. I uh, stepped out onto the wheel of the plane and you have a thing called a static line. It's not, there's no fat man strapped to you. You're all by yourself, eh? Bye-bye. <laughs> it's called static line. And then as you fall out of the plane, it pulls your ripcord for you. And then you, you fall. So I step out onto this wheel. The wind is blowing me. And the pilot had forgotten to put the brake on the wheel. So as I step onto this wheel, I just fall. So I'm just falling all over the place like this, completely the opposite of the way you're supposed to fall. But then the rook court falls, pulls, and then there, I'm floating. It was the most amazing experience. <laughs> Maybe you'll get a chance to join the parachuting club. But then I reached what is called terminal velocity fairly quickly because I've got a parachute, it's got a lot of friction, and it seemed like hours I was up there and I was watching the fields and everything. And then eventually I'm coming down to earth and geez, now it's getting fast. And there's this barbed wire fence. And those are these horrible little round parachutes in those days. And there's this barbed wire fence. I'm trying to get myself away from this fence. And then as I land, I hit my knees against my chin. I nearly <laughs> knock myself out there. You're supposed to land and roll, you know, like they in the movie. Anyway, I wasted enough time. But that's the beauty of going to university. You're going to do things that you never get a chance to do. Okay. Um,
Okay, so now we know what terminal velocity is. Who would like to just put it in their own words? What is terminal velocity? It is when the force of gravity is balanced by the force of? And now the falling object or projectile is obeying Newton? One. One. I'm never going to mention this again because we don't care about this for the rest of the year. I just need you to know because they sometimes ask, what is terminal velocity? And there you've got the definition. Okay, but for the rest of this time, we've got to discuss um, projectile motion where this force doesn't apply. Okay, so we're just dealing with things that are thrown up and fall down. Thrown up, fall down. And all the questions of question, normally it's about three or so, or two, are on objects that are thrown up and fall down. So, there's a number of terms that we need to get used to, which you haven't yet done. First of all, we've got a thing called initial velocity. Okay? When we throw it up, it's got an initial velocity. You like that idea? Yes, sir. What do we call initial velocity from momentum? V-I. V-I. Right. But if, we, if it's a momentum problem or it's a this kind of problem, do you think direction applies? Yes. So guys, do this with me. Projectile motion is very important that it's a vector. So we're a vector. We do this. What's the next thing after doing this? You've got to choose a direction as positive. positive. Guys, just choose for now and most of this, the rest of this year up as positive. You can choose down. I don't care. You won't use marks. But this, most, things, most problems start with something being thrown up. Okay? So VI is going to be equal to probably plus something. So let's say let upwards be positive. I'm just teaching you how you're going to do all the problems. Who wants to give me an initial velocity that goes upwards? So something is thrown upwards at the start of the problem. Give me a velocity. I don't care what velocity. 10 meters per second. 10 meters per second. My favorite number. Thank you. Plus 10 meters per second. Is that a velocity? Meters per second? Yes, boss. Now, um, when it goes up, is there a final velocity when it comes to... Watch what happens. Does it stop at the top? Yes. Should we stop it there for a moment? Yes. So do you agree everything stops and then it comes back? Can anything go back without stopping? No. So let's say there's going to be a V final. And what is the final velocity? It always comes after the initial velocity. Negative. At this time, when it's at this top, what is the final velocity equal to? Anybody? It's, it's getting slower, 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 slower. It comes to a stop. So let's say the final velocity is naught in this case. Everyone happy with that so far? So Nelly, can you see there? You want to change? You're happy. Okay, that is where it's reached the, let's call it the apex of its flight, the top of the parabola. So here's the flight so far. It's gone from here and it's reached, it's gone from point A and it's now at point B. Make sense? And what was the velocity at A? It was 10. And now at B, it's naught. Now, this is the kind of question they're going to ask you. How long does it take before it comes to a stop? How far does it travel before it comes to a stop? Lovely, easy question. Oh, this is so easy. It's like momentum. Thank you. When you understand it, that impulse left equals impulse right, these questions are just like, oh, they're just easy. So this is also a very easy question. If you know the acceleration and what acceleration means, 
Do you guys have an idea what velocity means? Can let you, what is velocity? If I say my car is going 10 meters per second, what does that actually mean? My car is going 10 meters per second. What does it mean to you? You see, this is just, it must mean something to you. What does it mean to you? It's the speed. So every second, how far does it go? 10 meters. So after two seconds, how far has it gone if its speed is constant? 20. So what do I do? I multiply its speed by its time. And then I get its distance. Happy with that? Here's why you do that. We do it because velocity is displacement over time. When we multiply velocity by time, we left with displacement. So if I say it's going 10 meters per second for two seconds, when I multiply velocity by time, I'm left with displacement with the 20 meters. But I want you to intuitively know that. Does that make sense? So if you know that velocity is displacement upon time, what is acceleration? It's a difficult concept. What is acceleration? And I'm writing all my values here. So is it what does anybody understand force, by acceleration? Force times, force times time? So. Force times Newton 2 acceleration equals F equals MA from Newton 2. So A is equal to, we divide both sides by M. We know that A is force upon mass. A equals F upon M. But that's not going to help us here. I need to know what is your understanding of acceleration. So it's the, so it's the change in velocity. It's the change in velocity per second. Does that make sense? So Cassie, you chose 10, which is a lovely number. I'll tell you why. Did, is there a reason you chose 10? Good choice. Because acceleration due to gravity is approximately 10. That's 9.8, which is as close as anything to 10. So this is what it means. As things go up, do they get faster or slower? They get slower by 10 every second. Now, everybody say that. As things are thrown up, they get slower by 9.8. Can you just say 10 for now? As things are thrown up, they get slower by 10 every second. That is what is meant by acceleration. Now let's take the number that Cassie gave us. Let's represent it. Is this object going upwards? That we threw? Yes. Yes. It's going upwards at plus 10. At point A, its velocity... At point A, don't confuse A with acceleration, its velocity is 10 plus 10 meters per second. Okay, let's do this. Let's act it out, everybody. That's how we start the problem, just for fun. Okay? And now it's going up at 10. Go up. So we're going up at 10. And now come to a halt. Okay. Now, at at the top it's naught, right? Now it's going to start falling down, so now its velocity is negative. Happy with that? Yes. And then it's going to get faster. So it starts faster, it gets slower, 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 naught, and then it starts going negative downwards. Negative velocity is when you go down, positive velocity is when you go up. Sure, Basically, when it reaches the top and when it reaches the bottom, it's zero, basically, both times, isn't it? But we never take it when it hits, after it hits the ground. We always take it just before it hits the ground. Don't, good question. Don't ever confuse is it. it. Um, is it is possible that we can learn it and write it? Please. Absolutely. Feel free. Now, let's take, let's take Cassie's value of 10. And let's do this. Let's act it out. 10 
After one second, what's it going to be going? Changed by 10 every second, right? So after one second, it's changed by 10. It's gone to? Zero. Does that make sense? Make sense? Now let's keep going. What is it after another second? Changes by 10, but in this direction downwards. Minus 10. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, let's do it with 25 or 20. Okay, let's do it with act 20. We throw something up with 20. Okay, let's act it. That's the start of the problem. It's going up. It's positive 20. What is it after one second? After one second, it's lost 10. So what is its value? 10. Keep going. After two seconds, it's zero. zero. After three seconds, minus 10. Minus 10. After four seconds, minus, minus 20. After five seconds, it keeps going past where it started. Minus 30. Minus 30. After four se another second, minus 40. So I just Okay, was there a question? Why is it losing 10? Who'd like to explain why it's losing 10 every second? Because when we throw things up at it, they get slow. How much slower? By 10 every second. And when we drop them, they get faster by 10 every second. So that is why when it's at the top and at zero, what's it going to be after another second? Minus 10, because going down is always minus. So let's act it out. Give me any number. Give me an awkward number. I don't care. I can do it. 17. Okay, let's start. Going up at 17, what is it after one second? Zero. No, 17 seven. minus 10 is 7. seven. Let's keep going another second. What's 7 minus 10? Minus three. So it's gone to the top and now it's coming down at minus 3. Does that make sense? Yes. After another second it's coming down at minus 3. Minus three. Oh. What's minus 3 minus 10? Minus 13. Minus 13. And what is it after another second? Minus 23. Minus 23 and after another second? Minus 33. Does this sound so easy to you? Yes. So how do people lose marks with this? Well, okay, here's the first thing. A is not quite 10, it's 9,8. But we're going to use our calculator. We're not going to do it by mental arithmetic. So then, does that all make sense? So far, lost nobody? You now know exactly what acceleration is? You can work it out almost mentally what it's going to be? Yes. Okay. Now here's just the last thing that I, I need you to pay careful attention to, and then I'm never going to mention it again. But it's quite important. And this is how I work it out. How far would this travel? That's the other kind of question to ask. How far would it go before it reaches the top? Now it started at 10 and it ended at 0. What is the average of 10 and 0? 5. 5. Its average velocity between that time and that time was five. So how far do you think it's traveled in that second? It's actually traveled five. And that's, then we work out what is called delta y. Would it go up plus five or down minus five? It's going to be delta y is approximately plus five. How did I work that out? How did I work that out? You can? <laughs> no, I know your name. So 5 minus 5 is 0. What did I do? 
I mentally worked out the average velocity between here and here. <laughs> so let's work it out. How did I work it out? What was its velocity here? When it started, it was 10. And after one second, it was zero. So what's the average velocity for that second? It's somewhere between 10 and zero. What's, what's the middle between 10 and zero? Five. So that means on average, it traveled five meters. And delta y is therefore five. Now let's do another one. Scenario. Maybe you can help me out. Or Lolita. Let's give you guys a chance. What if it's 20? Let's start with 20. Okay, it's going upwards at 20. After one second, what is it going? 10. Lovely. So what's the average between 20 and 10? 10. What's the average velocity between 20 and 10? What's the middle between 20 and 10? 15. 15. So how far has it traveled in that first second when it started at 20 and ended at 10? How far has it traveled? 15 meters. All happy? Now that's the last time, that's the last time I'm going to ever work it out by mental arithmetic. And then let me tell you why. I've got what are called equations of motion. They give it to you on your BFF. This is your BFF, by the way. They give you those equations of motion. And then you're going to find this. The very first thing they give you are four things you've never seen before. Those are your equations of motion. This is your BFF. This is what we symbolize. That's what we do to our best friends. And now, if they ask you to find delta y, you don't work it out by mental arithmetic like I do. You go, you find a formula that's got delta y, you find the formula that's got everything else they give you, and then you work it out. Happy with that, everybody? Yes, sir. Shall we see how well we do? Now, we had a few questions. So, if I have to use i, let it be more average be 95 or would it be 40? So, if you start at 110, right? A hundred. And is it going up? Yes, sir. So what is it going to be after one second? Ninety. Ninety. So if it starts at a hundred and after one second it's ninety, what's the average between a hundred and ninety? Ninety-five. So how far will it have gone in that first second? Ninety-five. Do you know what? It's so easy, but nobody ever expects you to work it out like we've done. They always ask you to go and get an equation of motion. And then you go and work it out with your equation of motion because they will only mark it if, you, if you're not allowed to do it by mental arithmetic. But you've got to give some concrete way that you know, some methodology that they recognize. So can I now give you the four equations of motion? You're not expected to learn them. But can I ask you to learn them anyway? They're on the very first page and let's just see if, when I give you last year's paper to work through, because you're almost ready to work through last year's paper, believe it or not, 13 marks a gift. From what you know, I think we'll be able to solve next last year's paper. After how many minutes have we had? You haven't even seen the equations of motion. We've had like 13 minutes and you're ready to do last year's final paper. Let's just see how ready you are. Okay, here's the equations. Won't you write it down because I've never managed to um, print it for you. V equals I didn't try to tell you something new, what to say. That's great, man. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your day. Yes. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm shooting at the black because now I just didn't see anything. Where did you see the black part of the line? Is it me? Just take them down accurately, everybody. Okay. 
So everyone writing those down? Okay, let's give you last year's paper. Let's just throw you in the deep end and see if you sink this one. 